the airplane is traveling fast enough, move the throttle to the full advanced position and ease way back on the stick. Keep it back to start climbing. Increased pressure on the stick keeps the airplane on the arc of the circle. When approaching the peak of the loop, we hold the picture to show the position of the wing against the horizon. This position must be checked until you're sure the airplane is level. As soon as the airplane starts down, when there is no danger of stalling, retard the throttle to keep the engine from over revving. When coming out of the loop, the airplane must still be headed for the aiming point. Advance the throttle to climb to the original altitude and then push the stick forward to resume normal flight. In performing the loop, here are the points of common errors. Failure to attain sufficient speed on the dive before the climb is started. Too much back pressure on the stick during the climb. This may lead to a stall. Retarding the throttle too early. This makes the airplane fall out of the loop. And lastly, errors in rudder use at any point in the loop. This results in failure to maintain the flight path in a vertical plane. When the stick is in neutral position, the airplane is in level flight and your line of sight is on the horizon. To climb, apply back pressure to the stick, which raises the elevators. In this position, the resultant slipstream pressure is down, which pushes the tail down and lifts the nose up above the horizon. The pilot's line of sight also comes above the horizon and he knows the airplane is climbing. So, conversely, forward stick lowers the elevators and the resultant slipstream pressure is up. Now, the pilot's line of sight is below the horizon and the airplane is diving. A neutral stick will hold the plane at a constant angle of glide, while back pressure will return the airplane to level flight, which can be maintained by returning the stick to neutral and centering the controls. When the airplane is flying straight ahead and the rudder is neutral, the nose remains on one point of the horizon. To change direction to the left, rudder pressure is applied which will force the tail to the right, yawing the plane to the left. Right rudder pressure, on the other hand, moves the airplane back along the horizon to the right. By neutralizing the rudder, the airplane once again is made to fly straight ahead. In considering the third set of controls, the ailerons, it can be seen that stick pressure to the pilot's left forces the left aileron up, causing a downward force on the plane's left wing. The right aileron goes down, raising the right wing. Thus, the airplane would tend to roll about its longitudinal axis. 